In this next video, I'm going to walk you through an example data set that we will be using in the remaining videos as an example data set. This data comes from a bioconductor, from a, um, a microbiome package, and it's got microbiome data. Um, so more and more people in this class tend to be coming from fields where they look at these kinds of omics type type of data. And sometimes those are stored in R using different object types. So I think it's worthwhile that we do just a little bit to explore how you can work with that kind of data. So uh, the data that we're going to look at is in an object class called Philosec. We've looked at some of this in the in-class exercise already and in some earlier videos where we looked at a part of it called the variable slot. So that particular part of it was giving some meta information uh, about the samples. So things like um, their age, and I believe it gave sex, and then um, some things about nationality and some other health information. So we looked at that before, and to extract that piece, we used what was called an accessor function called get variable that pulled out that variables piece. In that larger Philosect object class, there's also a sample area of our data. And we're gonna be looking at that today. So we'll use that same kind of accessor function. There's a special one that pulls out just that part. But what this looks like once we get it is it gives the information from actually measuring those samples to determine bacteria levels in, in each sample. So when we look at this, when we pull it out, it will be a matrix and we can test that once we get it. Each column will give a sample. So if you'll remember, there were a little bit over a thousand study subjects in this data set, and then some of them were measured at multiple time points. So this will give the information for a particular study subject at a particular time point. Going down the rows, each row will give a different bacteria species, and there will actually be row names that are a little bit helpful here as we go down, and we'll want to use those. Then each, um, each cell of the matrix gives the level of a specific species of bacteria for a specific sample. So in this set of slides, we're going to look at this data a little bit more, but then we're going to also go through an exercise of turning this into a tidy data format. So right now it's in a matrix. It's not even in a table or, or a more general data frame. So we certainly need to fix that. But then we're also going to want to do some other things. Like we've got information that we might care about up here in the sample names that we might want to get down into their own columns. So that might immediately suggest to you that we want to do some pivoting. Then we've also got some information in the row names that we would really like to use. So we'll need to take that and bring that into the main data frame. So through this, this video lecture, we'll go through and we'll do the steps of getting that into a tidy format where it's in a nice format that we can work with as we move through the other lectures in this chapter. All right, so we'll load the data in first. Again, it's in that microbiome um, package. And then the data set is called Atlas 1006. And we're going to pull out from that larger data object just this part for the sample. So we'll use the successor function called get sample to do that. So let's go take a look at what that looks like in R. First of all, I'm going to load tidyverse because I like to, to be able to use piping and, and eventually we might want to do plotting or, or mutate or, or other things to kind of clean up the data. Then we need to load the microbiome data. That's the, the package that has this data set stored in it. And um, you'll need to install this if you don't have it already. You might want to look a few lectures ago in this chapter when we installed this package. And you might also want to Google microbiome and bioconductor to, to pull up the instructions for how to install this. It's a little bit of a different process installing things from bioconductor than it is installing it from, uh, from CRAN as we have been doing for most of the packages. All right, so now we're going to pull the data, and that's called Atlas 1006. And if we want, we can come down and again check the class for that. And you'll see that that's in this Philosec object class. All right, so we'll name this, let's see, I think I have this named Atlas Sample Data. And we'll start with this larger object. But then to get just um, just the matrix that has the sample information, we'll use that that accessor function from Bioconductor called get sample. So we can run that, and now we can come down and see what class this has. 
So you can see that that's a matrix. We can use some things like call names to look at the column names of that. And these are some classic techniques for kind of exploring matrices. So that's really, really long. So we might actually, in this case, want to pipe into head and take a look at just the first few. So again, we're seeing that this definitely has information about the sample name. And if you look closely, it's following a regular pattern where it has a sample and then a hyphen and then it has a number. So once we get this into its own column, we're gonna be able to pretty easily split out and take that sample number if we wanna just get the sample number rather than keeping it as sample one, sample two, sample three, and so on, if, if that's something that we wanna do. We can look at the row names for this as well. And again, uh, for this particular object class, for this matrix that's tucked into that PhiloSeq object, um, it's actually using the row names for information. It's using it for the name of species of each of the bacteria that it's testing. So you can see that right here, and we can see right away that this is something that we're probably going to want to keep. The other thing that we can do is we can, to kind of explore this data, we can take the data and with matrices, you can use square bracket indexing to explore pieces of the data. So we can kind of cut out like, like a corner of it and take a look. So let's take the first six rows. We're going to put the, the row indicators first when we do this. And then we can do the first six columns. So we're doing this by position. We're saying we want rows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then a comma, and then that we want columns 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then when we run it, you can see that we get this sample. Again, it's very clear that the row names are giving the, the bacteria species, and then we have samples going across. And then each of these cell values is giving the uh, measurement for the species of bacteria in this sample. All right, so this slide is going through some of those pieces we were just doing. I think that I did the, um, the piping in a bit of a different order here, where instead of nesting, the data frame inside of call names, I'm actually piping into that. And the same for row names when we checked out row names. And then here is an example showing the square bracket indexing to explore uh, just that corner of the data frame a little bit more. So now that we've seen what it looks like, we want to think a little bit about how we can make this tidy if we want to use the tools that we've been developing to visualize the data and then also to um, to, to model the data and to do other, other of these um, kind of manipulations and data cleaning steps that we've learned in the class so far. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do, it's in a matrix, and as we found, we're not gonna be able to use a lot of the tidyverse tools on a matrix. So we're gonna need to change it into a data frame. As we do that, we saw that those row names have things that we care about. So we're gonna wanna make sure that we bring those row names into their own columns so we can work with those. And then finally, it's got this wide format now where it's got over a thousand columns and it's got each column giving a different sample. Those column names are giving information about the sample right now that we really would like to use to maybe be able to filter down the specific samples or, or model by sample or something like that. And so we're gonna be doing some pivoting to make sure that we can get those column names into their own column where we can work with them. So we'll just do this step by step and explore it a little bit, and I'll be going back and forth from these slides to R to, to talk about what we're doing. So the first thing that we want to do is change this into a data frame and make sure that we pull in what were the row names, those, those bacteria species, pull those in so they have their own columns. So when we do that, um, to get something into a tibble, you can start by doing as tibble. But sometimes if you want to pull those row names in and you're starting from a matrix, it can be helpful to start with the, the classic base R as dot data frame first. And then that leaves us with the row names that we can pull in. Um, a lot of times once you get something into a tibble, it's cut off those row names and just uses the default numbers. So let's go through and do that. We can take our sample data. And we'll just build up this code first, and then we'll go back and assign it to a name of a new object that we can use later. But first, we'll go through and make sure we have it exactly like we want it. All right, so we're going to do as.data.frame. When we run that, we're still going to see this kind of like massive thing down here. But, but at this point, if we check the class, we should see that it's in a data frame, whereas it was in a matrix before. 
All right, and then the next thing we want to bring those row names over into their own column. And so we can do row names to column. We have this loaded because we loaded tidy verse already. And in this case, let's call that variable, let's call that species, since that's the name of the species. All right, so now if we wanted to, let's see, we could, let's just explore it for a second. So let's select the first four columns maybe, and then slice the first four rows. And again, this isn't a piece I'm gonna keep, I just wanna use this to be able to kind of look at a little chunk of our data frame. So we can see now that we brought species in and we have that as a, its own column exactly like we want. All right, our next step is gonna be to take these columns and pivot them down so that we have one column that has species one, species two, species three, and so on. And then we have the column that has all of the information in it. So let's take a look here. Here's kind of a cartoon of that. We have things in a data frame right now, but it's not tidy because we have this information we care about up in the sample, in the column name, this information about the sample. And we wanna get it in a tidy data frame where we'll only have three columns, but then we'll have everything where we can really use it. So we'll have species name, we'll have the sample number, and in this case, if we want to, we can pull off so it's just that number rather than being sample hyphen one and so on. And then we want the, the prevalence. So this is the, the level of bacteria they measured for the sample and the species. So to do that, our first thing that we're gonna wanna do is to do pivot longer. And we're gonna pivot all the columns. Again, remember there are over a thousand. We're gonna pivot all of those except for species. So we could list all the ones that we wanna pivot, but in this case, it's gonna be a lot shorter for us just to say pivot everything but species. So we can do that negative species. So let's come through, we'll take off this part that we were using just to kind of explore, and we'll do pivot longer, everything but species. And then we need to say what column we want the names to go to and what column we want the, the values to go to in terms of like what we want those new column names to be. So we'll do names two, and in this case, we want those names to go and be the sample. And then we need to do values too, and we'll make those values the prevalence because again, those, those, each of those matrix cells are measuring the prevalence of a specific bacteria. Oh, I think I misspelled that, let's try that. There we go. All right, so this is starting to look pretty tidy. So we have the species name here. We have what used to be the column names. This gives us the information about which sample is. Uh, each value is, and we have it right here. And then we have the prevalence here. You can see by pivoting, we have something that's really, really long now, almost 150,000 rows, but that's okay. We can still work with it a lot more easily than we could work with the, the data in the format it was before, at least in terms of using the tidyverse tools that we've been really kind of like building up a lot over this course. All right, so here's the code again for doing that piece. And here's the example of what it looks like at that stage. So I'll leave it like we have it right now, but if we wanted to, we certainly could pull out just these numbers. There are a few ways we could do that. We could use the separate function to split this into two different columns and use that hyphen as the separator. And then we could just get rid, we'd have one that just had sample. And then we'd have one with the numbers. We could just get rid of the ones with the sample by using select with a negative for that name. The other thing that we could do if we wanted is we could do string extract with a pattern where we're looking for numbers, right? So we could do mutate with string extract on this and use a regular expression for identifying one or more numbers. And we could pull out just the numeric part of this if we wanted to.